Welcome back everybody, in this video I'm going to show you the progress I've made on the battleship tutorial. So as you can see I've got five scenes here all with a boat inside, that's what it's suggesting, and then the final one here. So what this really means is I've now made it so the player can place their five boats on the 10 by 10 grid and them not overlap or anything and hopefully it's bug free, obviously it's hard to test every single thing. But this took me an extraordinary amount of time and in this video I'm going to show you what it looks like now and also some tips for if you were going to do something similar um, to this down the line. So while it's loading I'll just recap how it works for you. So there is a 10 by 10 grid and each of these tiles is unique um, and you know they're unique because they have the numbers 0 to, 1, to 99 on them um, meaning there's a hundred unique tiles here and then using a script we're replacing the tiles in every one of these locations with um, a tile from this scene and we're just using this first tile. So by replacing every single tile in, this, in these scenes with this one, it starts with a nice fresh normal looking um, grid that should look like that. Um, and then as we place our boats, uh, as you see here we've got a trigger box and we've got these um, scripts here at the right and basically it's just checking to see where the boat is and then using the x and y coordinates to then turn the value from the zero which means the the very first tile to for example this one would be three and four and it makes this the small boat on the vertical axis and then the five and six would make it along the horizontal axis uh, and by using that kind of logic uh, we are able to paint down um, the boats and then when um, we're checking to see if there's a boat in the way. We check if the value of that tile has anything more than zero in it and if it does there's a boat there and it tells us you can't put it there and then we can try again in a different spot. So now it's loaded we can see what it looks like in practice. So as you see we have this two boat and like I said um, currently we're actually using the player's uh, sprite and we're making it look like the boat that we're going to place. When we press Z or X, which is A and B on the Game Boy, uh, it switches it to a different state, um, meaning it looks like it's a different orientation. So as you can see, the bottom left um, of the boat is the rotation point, which is how it actually does the uh, maths more simple in the triggers. Um, so basically it knows which uh, bottom left point it is and then which orientation it is, and we can then set the correct values on the grid to make it display when I press enter. So boat plays successfully, we then get taken to the next scene and you see these now have the boat on, so it says there's already a boat in this position. Um, no matter what you try you can't overlap boats. Um, and so we can place our boat anywhere we like. And then we get taken into the third scene with the third boat. We can put it down anywhere we want. Fourth boat, put it down anywhere we want. And then the fifth boat and fantastic. And then it says finding opponent. So if you remember we had the free by free game um, where it was actually done with actors rather than tile replacement um, and we only had one boat. So just like that one I'll use the I'll use the setup script where it's checking to see um, if we can join a session and if not we try and host one. And then obviously I also have a button that takes us back to the start in case we don't like the placement of our current boats. So right now you can't actually fight an opponent and you obviously can't technically fight them um, in the this player when I press play because you need a link cable and two Game Boys and I think apparently there is a um, emulator online that you can play through two scenes at once and I'll definitely have to look into that if I want to show you how it works you know on the screen rather than recording um, the Game Boys. But I just want to talk about the major downside about what I've just done and that's just this sheer amount of time it took me to pull this off. I actually timed the last one obviously on the very last one because the boat is so big you can imagine it doesn't actually go in like this top like almost half of the of the map because one two three four five if you're in these top four the boat can't be placed vertically. And then that was also the same for um, row G. Anything raised, uh, placed horizontally can't go there. So so yeah, I, I think I timed it and it took me about five hours to get this one done. 
I don't remember how long the Bogue 4 took, but it did take me a very long time. I can't remember when I last uploaded a video on this, but I've been working on it um, on and off ever since that video, and it's absolutely taken me forever. So with that knowledge in mind, I'm now looking into scripting um, in order to speed it up. So if we have a look at this article here by GV Studio Central, it actually gives us an interesting way of speeding up our workflow. So before I actually talk about the article, I'll just talk about why it took so long. If you have a look here, we go into our scripts and it checks, first of all, is the boat out of the grid? And if it is, then it tells us you can't do it and just stops the script. Um, but then if it is in the grid, it then uh, finds, let's imagine we're in A1. This is the, this is boat one. So it's the, the boat that's the size of two tiles. So in A, it finds A and if there is a boat there, you see it says there's a boat in this position already. Um, and if it's vertical, we already know it can't happen. But if it's horizontal, we can we need to check to see if there's a boat in B1. And if there is, it says it can't happen um, and it stops the script. But if it if there is no boat there, it sets it to the correct uh, value. So A1 will be 4 and B1 will be 5 in order to correctly display um, these things. So the copy and pasting comes in when I'm pasting this A column into the B column and then I'm changing all of the um, references to A to B and all the B's to C's and so on. Um, and at the very beginning of setting up a scene, I also need to um, correctly, you know, change all these fours and fives to the correct one. And also there's also the two and three of the vertical if I show you in here. So there's a lot of setup and then a lot of copy and pasting and just doing monotonous tasks but also at the very beginning, you have to make sure you're setting everything to the correct thing so you can um, display everything correctly. So imagine there's horizontal and vertical boats. Um, there's a hundred tiles. That's implying there's 200 things, but if the boat is two uh, things wide, then that means there's 400 pieces of information, roughly, that I need to set in the entire scene, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, so the sheer amount of just information in a scene is quite overwhelming and it does take a while. Um, you also have to factor in the fact that as you add more into the GB Studio project, it slows down. So even just a simple click can take a few seconds to actually, you know, go into place. If I open up this X thing, see it's taking forever. And then you know, even the things haven't loaded, then I have to find my place. So if you stop and come back, it can even take even longer. So yeah, it's um, it's not very efficient. That's the main thing, right? So looking at this um, GB Studio Central article, we might actually find a way of speeding up our workflow. So obviously it has a lot of pretext about how it works and um, some tutorials and some um, links to some other things to get some more information about specific events. Um, but the main thing that they're showing us here is exporting the project data and then looking at it and also changing it in order to to learn in a way. So what we could do, what I could have done at the very beginning is export it when I did the first row um, in that two boat and then have a look at that and then just copy and paste it. And I could find and replace every reference to, for example, the B column and then change that to the C column. And now I can go in and change all the A columns to B columns, you know, just with finding and replacing. Um, and that would be basically automatic and I would have probably saved myself hours and hours of work because coding is arguably way more efficient than event-based coding. Um, but obviously it's all dependent on what exactly you're doing. What I'm doing is very repetitive and it's very simple to adjust. Um, so I would definitely think about this in the future for myself. And if you're going to be doing something similar, I definitely recommend thinking of ways you can basically speed up what you're doing. So if you're not very confident with actually writing out the code yet, doing it in events and then exporting it and having a look at it will definitely help you to at least get a frame of mind of what the, the code should look like. And obviously you don't need to do everything in code, but some things will definitely be uh, just a lot easier to do on a large scale. And that's what I've come into 
um, issues with lately is just large scale things. So if you're doing something large scale, definitely take a look at this. Definitely think about how you can implement um, a more efficient way of working on your game in the future. And yeah, obviously, thank you so much to uh, GB Studio Central to put these tips together and having these uh, links. And on that note, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the best. Remember to like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video and if you have used the GBVM scripts much yourself. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.